A while ago, I discovered that there's a principle called electrosmosis, or ionic liquid exchange, which um, can transfer liquid through solid objects using electricity. And this is used in various applications. On the largest scale, it's used in some construction industries. They put electrodes into the ground, pass a DC current, and it actually causes a migration of the water. It sort of has a dewatering effect to drainage. It's very interesting. And... I discovered a company called Rosal who make solid-state dehumidifiers. And these units are basically mounted to the side of electrical control panels and you apply three volts at, from a current limited supply to them and they, without any moving parts, absorb water on this side and actually put it out the other side to uh, dry out panels and keep them from building up condensation inside. I thought that is really interesting. And at the time I, I looked about it, I looked, I tried finding a distributor of them, I couldn't find one in the UK. But recently I, I revisited this, sort of, I rediscovered it, if you will, and I dropped my email and uh, I shamelessly dropped the fact that I've got a fairly modestly sized YouTube channel. And they were very generous. They sent me a few items to test, to play about with with the note saying, Westside International, hello Clive, compliments of Rosal membrane dehumidifiers, have fun. And that's exactly what we're going to do, because I'm going to show you how these work and the principle of them. So it, this is one of the bigger ones. This is one of the smaller ones. And I've also got the type that goes in this little plug into a case. So you basically drill a 12 millimeter hole in the case. You fit this in, you put a locking ring at the back and either solder onto the terminals or you connect spade terminals and connect a three volt supply. And then it actually dehumidifies the panel. And I'm going to demonstrate that. I've put this humidity meter inside. I've preloaded this with humidity by just putting it outside for a while, just so it got humid and inside. And I've brought it in and I've left it's sitting here for over an hour just to stabilize and here I have a three volt supply so I'm just going to plug this in and I'm going to tell you the current and I'm going to leave this sitting up in the corner here so I'm turning it on and initially the current has shot up to about 180 milliamps the reason for that is that this is based on a membrane with an uh, electrode on the other side and it is a moisture absorbing membrane so initially the current is quite high it peaks at initial power up as uh, because it's got that high moisture content. But as it migrates through, it, the current goes down. It has now dropped to 86 milliamps. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this sitting here for this video, uh, just basically starting to get ready. It's, it's already moving moisture to the outside of the enclosure. And afterwards, just uh, I'm going to re-record sections of the video. I'm just going to start the camera up again. I'm just going to record it later on. And I'm going to give you the current, what current it's passing. And I'm going to give you an indication, well, you're going to see the humidity on the display. So let's do that. But first of all, one of the items they sent me was the type of switch mode power supply they recommend for this. And it's quite interesting that it's got the usual, it's actually quite a well-made switch mode power supply. They've obviously bought these in, but they're kind of optimised. They're chosen for their specific application. The mains comes in. It's got the it's got an earth connection f that goes onto the chassis. It's also got an earth lead that runs down here, and couples onto the output directly via uh, a, well, not directly. It's via a capacitor. The input supply goes via this uh, proper ceramic capacitor, via the uh, com mode suppression choke. It's got filtering to ground. It's got rectifier. It's got inrush. Uh, current limiting, I would guess. Yes, it does look like in-rush current limiting. It's the standard switch mode power supply. It's what you just expect for a typical power supply. Um, good isolation output. It's got the feedback, and you can also fine-tune the voltage. That's to allow for fine-tune the voltage so that you've got exactly three volts. They're quite strict about the voltage in these things. They say it should be three volts plus or minus 0.1 of a volt, which I wonder why that is. The only thing I can think of here is that because this is a membrane... Oh, hold on, let's, uh, let's bring in Rosal's own document documentation here. So, am I going to have to tame this down? No, I think that's all right. I'll show tame it down. There, that's tamed down. So, this is the humid side. Here is the membrane, which is the membrane in the middle with an electrode on either side, which is closely coupled, and it's a moisture-permeable uh, electrode. And there it is showing the moisture being transferred to the outside. Now, here's an interesting thing. It shows the water molecules in here, but it kind of suggests it's the hydrogen atoms of the oxygen molecule 
that are actually transferred through and then the oxygen comes back off inside again and recombines back into standard O2 oxygen molecules. Um, certainly when I had been testing this for a while, I sniffed it. I was wondering, is it going to be slight ozone here? Is there going to be anything like that? There wasn't any hint of that. So I wonder if it becomes quite oxygen rich inside. I'm not sure. Um, I kind of thought initially it was that the whole water molecule would get taken through, but, but uh, apparently not. Now, the electrodes themselves, looking at this, I shall brighten this image up just a little tad again. Probably too much. I am prone to doing that too much. The electrode on the inside is a matte black uh, sort of coating on the film. And if you look at the side of this, uh, there is a sort of slightly rippled film where this is clamped. They've got two metal plates and uh, they've got the electrodes inside that the actual film's clamped between with a sort of silicone type rubber material, which is just providing that tight fit that presses electrodes against that. But on the output side... It's got a sort of multi-directional fibre. It's, it's like very fine strands are, uh, of material. It reminds me a lot of the carbon fibre deposition that you get in some of those little uh, flat heaters that are based on a film. And when you look at the uh, small units like this, this has the same construction. It's got a dark side on the inside, I presume there, and then the sort of like the sort of fibre on the outside. And looking at that, looking at this one as well, you can see the fibres down the inside of that as well. I'm not sure if you are going to see the fibres. I could zoom in on this, I could zoom in it, but not too far. Uh, do I tempt fate by focusing on this? Hold on, I'm just going to try and focus on this and zoom in. So do you see that sort of fibrish effect there? I wonder what that is. I wonder if it's even a sort of platinum type material. And the other side is that jet black with a slight patterning. And if you look up the edge of this, you can see a slight ripple where they've sandwiched that membrane in between. It really is just a sort of thin plastic film. So let's focus right back down on there. Oh, that kind of worked. That's reassuring. Let's zoom back out again. So you can see this is already uh, sinking down in humidity and the current's going down as well. It's still the three volts applied across that. My bench power supply says 29 milliamps now. I mean, you consider it. Uh, I did a test on this earlier on and without wanting it, it's all, almost like a spoiler, isn't it? I stopped the test to reload it by going outside with the unit opening it up and just letting it rehumidify an ambient outside air as a good example of you know what real life would be like. Uh, the current dropped about 19 milliamps, and if you consider 3 volts at 19 milliamps, that's the equivalent of a LED. Uh, and the humidity at that point was down to 38%. So that is a huge, you know, it really does have a dramatic effect. And keep in mind, this is just a tiny little plug here with, uh, I would say that's about 5 or 6 millimetres, say 6 millimetres diameter exposed area, which is about a quarter of an inch, a little disc. And if you consider that they do much larger versions, including panels of these, I think, uh, for large electrical panels where you really have a fairly huge volume of maybe a few cubic metres. They even suggest their use in small rooms where you want to keep the humidity down to avoid mould growth and things like that. But I don't think they're right up there for whole house dehumidification yet, much as that would be very impressive. The temptation is, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get my bottom spanked for this, the temptation is to take this apart. Uh, I have got in trouble before. I, they didn't say I couldn't take it apart. I guess that means that I can. And if I've been very naughty by taking it apart, they are allowed to spank my bottom. So uh, there we go. That was quite easy. I, I don't want to damage this. It's, it's my precious little thing. Right. So, hold on. There's one electrode. It's a, There's the strengthening back metal plate. There's this sort of silicone-type seal. And there's the metal. Now, here's an interesting thing that's well worth mentioning. I, I'm, just going to, I'm just going to jump about here because I'm being distracted as normal. Is this going to come off? I don't think this is coming off. It's either been pressed on very well. I don't want to damage it. But they've got a, it's a sort of Captain Tapish type film, quite rigid, uh, with a sort of mesh printed on. And, oh, is that an actual metal mesh? 
It's printed on the look of it, but it looks like an expanded mesh and it's quite thick. And then it's got this layer here on top of that. I do kind of want to separate it. Oh, oh, I've separated it. There it is with that a carbon fibre, could it be, across that? The secret is in this uh, membrane here. It's the special bit. It's the secret sauce. That's the bit that's taken them so long to develop, I presume. That's very interesting. Now, a couple of uh, rules using this. See, this is down to 64%. It's dropping quite quickly. And remember that I uh, left this to uh, stabilise. So it really is, all that. All you've seen it drop so far is just purely while it's been here. The current is down to 26 milliamps. Uh, as, the, as it dries out, the current drops progressively. Um, there are a couple of rules in using these. One of them, you don't touch it with your fingers because your fingers leave greasy fingerprints and obviously moisture isn't going to go through greasy fingerprints. And that also rules out the use of what are called... Uh, Volu uh, let me, I'm going to have to, I've just forgotten the acronym. Volatile protecting, no, oh, VOC, volatile organic coating. No, I can't remember now. Uh, it's basically, it's a coating that, right, okay, no, hold on. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to just pause momentarily while I check that. Ah, yes, there's nothing quite like turning a camera on to make you instantly forget everything. VCI. Volatile or Vapour and Corrosion Inhibitor. If you've ever had metal tools supplied that have... I'm just putting that well out of the way. I don't want it near my precious Rosal dehumidifiers. Uh, if you've ever had tools supplied that brown paper wrap around them, it's actually got a special sort of volatile oil in it, oil in it that is designed to spread out. It vaporises and then it coats everything in the vicinity with a thin molecular layer of oil. And it's used in electrical control panels traditionally. You'd get a little pot, you'd stick it in the bottom, you'd peel the lid off, or you'd just put a few drops of that stuff in and close the lid and then it would just fill the thing with vapour. In this instance, it's, the, it's an enemy to these because... You don't want to create an oil film across these. You want to actually keep them very receptive to moisture. I'm not sure how critical the voltage is. They do say 3 volts plus or minus 0.1 volts, but they also say that initially, if it's got a, when you turn it on and it's drawing a lot of current because the membrane is thoroughly soaked and therefore, because it is uh, designed to absorb the moisture naturally, uh, to convey it through, uh, initially it can have a peak of current and... Uh, that could theoretically pull the voltage down from the supply. They do uh, suggest using a current limited supply, a proper current limited supply. And the idea is that it should current limit it, but the voltage should go down, but it shouldn't just cut off. They say the hiccup supplies are not good, the ones that just keep pulsing on and off when they're overloaded like that. So the idea of that, I guess, is that the voltage goes down, but it's still effective in dehumidifying. There it's down to 62%. But uh, it... Well, then, as the uh, resistance increases, as it drives the moisture out, then the uh, current will lower and the voltage will rise back up to that 3 volts. I don't know why the 3-volt limit is there. Is it to stop more aggressive chemical reactions, you know, like electrolysis, where it's trying to convey the electrode through, the electrode material through the membrane itself and creates conductive paths through it? I'm not really sure. But 3 volts is fairly easy to deal with. It's quite an easy voltage to arrange. It's, it's lower than I was expecting, actually. Other things that are worthy of note, they do say don't connect it with reverse polarity. It can, it, not only will it reverse the process, the moisture will be drawn into your panel, which is not necessarily a good thing, but uh, it also could potentially, uh, it can damage the material, they say. It, it can damage the electrodes, because that's presumably why they've got one type of electrode on one side and one on the other, that sort of uh, fine mesh on the outside and this jet black stuff on the inside. Um... Let me think with the other things they mentioned. Yes, they, they also mentioned making sure you do mount it physically on your panel the correct way around, because uh, otherwise it will just bring moisture into your panel, possibly make it hydrogen rich inside as well. That would be quite exciting. But um, this, pro this is progressing nicely, and that's fundamentally it. What can, what can I say more about this? Electrosmosis, uh, or in this case, this is called uh, ionic membrane dehumidification. Um, it's used in various other applications. It's used in the construction industry for driving moisture out of earth in some instances. It's used uh, in some specific lab chemical applications for creating 
uh, tiny amounts of liquid flow, really controlled portions of liquid flow, flow through tiny capillary tubes using uh, electrical current. And in this case, it's down to 61% now. Uh, it's used just to create a maintenance-free dehumidifier that you just stick in a panel and it pulls the moisture out. And applications I can think of for this immediately are... CCTV. I'm thinking uh, those lasers we used recently on the Royal Edinburgh Military 2, they would have benefited from this because we did have a slight problem. Although they had sealed cases, they could breathe and the breathing wasn't such a great thing because as the air expands contract, you're always going to get your moisture coming in from outside and in Edinburgh we occasionally have the har, which is a sea fog and that results in very water-laden air. And we had a problem with it getting into lasers. It didn't damage the lasers, but it did condense on the output window, which was a problem. And uh, I think that something this size in one of those lasers just running would have just been perfect for just basically just seeping that moisture back out. Other things worthy of note, they say don't allow this to get wet on the outside the panel. It should have a little protective flap or something or be pointed down. Anything to actually stop the water going on the surface of the film itself. I'm guessing that's because if it gets saturated, it will pass quite a lot of current. It will be trying to... It will be, you know, you can probably overwhelm it with having too much moisture on the outside when it's just really trying to uh, move the sort of like the hydrogen uh, atoms out instead of the, in, against that sort of pool of water sitting on it. <clears throat> But other than that, it seems fairly robust, and in the right instances, in the right applications, it would be a maintenance-free dehumidifier. Very, very intriguing. So I'm going to update you on this on a regular basis. I'm going to uh, pause now. Let's see, uh, when did I start this? I'll have to actually check when I actually started this test. Down to 60% now, um, and I shall update you on sort of half-hourly intervals, probably. So uh, I'll catch you in a moment. The first update, the video when I started the uh, dehumidification, it was 67%. When I finished the video, I recorded the uh, value at 10 p.m., it was 58%, and the current had dropped to 25 milliamps. It's now 10.30 p.m., the humidity has dropped to 49%, and the current is at 24 milliamps. And I shall give you an update uh, in about half an hour. 11 o'clock update, 11 p.m. 44% humidity. Current uh, 23 milliamps. That's uh, going down roughly 1 milliamp per half hour at the moment. Uh, next update will maybe be 12. Not sure, because I'm about to have a bath. Yeah, see, that messes things up a bit. So uh, next update will be soon. The bath is complete. It was a very nice bath, thank you, but there's no video of that. It's now 12.20 a.m. I almost wrote p.m. there. The humidity is down to 41% and the current is only 21 milliamps at 3 volts. That's the last reading I'm going to take on video. I'll take some others later on, but uh, I'm going to upload this now because it takes a while to upload here in the Isle of Man. It's much slower than in the UK. Um, I'm going to provide... Information actually, I say 41%, uh, it's now dropped down to 39%. Okay, let's uh, well, okay, that'll do. I'll just update this later in the description down below. I shall also provide links to Westside International and Rosal, who generously provided these uh, modules for us to take a look at. They were very interesting indeed. I'm still perplexed that, you know, something solid state with no moving parts can actually couple moisture from one side to the other. It's very, very interesting. So, um, yes, uh, I'll add further information down below in the description.